Welcome to another video on data to decisions. In today's video, we'll be building another version of actual versus target type of comparison. But in this case, we're going to be comparing three things. So actual, forecast, and budget. And this is something uh, that I've tweaked a little bit, but the original idea uh, that I learned from uh, an article and a video by Excel Campus, which is a website that is run by uh, Microsoft Excel MVP, John, and this original technique I learned by reading an article from him, so I want to give him the credit. Uh, I've tweaked it a little bit in this case. So in this video, I'll be building this chart from scratch from raw data. So now let's get started. So this technique can be used anytime when you have, um, you know, these kind of multiple measures, we can use this technique. And in this case, I have the product, which is going to be going on the x-axis for us on the chart, which is the product name in this case that I've taken as a sample. And then you have the actual budget and forecast values for the sales of these products. Now I'm going to select all of them. And then I'm going to go insert. I will do 2D clustered column chart. and First thing I want to do is to right click format data series and make sure that the series is overlapping 100% because the effect that we're going for is a single column for each product, right? And this column, so for example, if you go to the drop down on the side uh, panel, and if in case you don't see the side panel, let's say for example, you don't see it, uh, always click on the chart, press control one, it'll appear. And then in the drop down of chart options, you can choose anything. So I'm going to choose the actual series and I'm going to fill it with the color that I want for my actual. So I'm going to go with the blue theme. So I will do blue. The next thing I'm going to do is to select the budget, which is the next series for me. And I'm going to say no fill. I don't want to fill anything in it, but I do want the border. So I'm going to do solid line and I will do a darker blue um, for me. And then I'm going to set this to, let's say we set it to one. If you want, the, let's do two points, two points. And now I will choose forecast. Again, no fill, don't fill the forecast uh, column, but do have a border. And this time I'm going to go with the green and exact same width of two points. Now the chart looks a little bit different and you can see that now the actual column, you know, it's correct, the blue. Uh, it's only that the budget and the forecast, they have these lines on the side or the vertical lines, which I don't want. I only want to keep the horizontal blue line and the horizontal green line for forecast. So now how can I do that? In order to do that, um, as per, I mean, again, referring back to John's article, um, he uses... Uh, another series which will be um, kind of hiding these vertical lines for the budget and the forecast series. So in order to do this, we're going to do a max. Actually, I will do a max of actual budget and forecast. And I'm going to do multiply that by 1.1. So this is essentially saying pick the maximum of the actual budget forecast and make uh, and add another 10% to the value. And this 1.1, 1 .1, uh, if this doesn't work for you, you can always try some other um, numbers to add to your maximum. And the reason why I'm doing this here is based on the values that I have, if this would work. But in your case, depending on the magnitude of the values that you have in your actuals and budgets and forecast, you could do um, a, a far less than 10%. You don't need to increase it by 10%. You can just increase it by 1%. To increase it by 1%, all you have to do is 1.01. .01. And now I'm going to do 10% because I'm dealing with much smaller magnitudes of value here. So 10% will work fine. And I'm going to do extend the formula here. So now I have created a set of values which is going to act like a background for me or on a border actually over it. So I'm going to right click here and then add the series. You can call it background or border. Uh, and then same mistake that I do every time. So in the series values, make sure there's nothing there and then select these values, press OK. Um, and the x-axis is still the same ABCDF, no change. OK, so now what has happened is if I go and look at my background series, I don't want any fill, right? But I do want the border, and I, do, I want the border to be like at least two points, because if you remember, that's what we created the other borders to be. So I'm going to create it as two, 
but the color I want it to be white. This color needs to match the background of your color uh, of your chart. So I'm going to click on the chart, and you can see that the chart area. Uh, you can make sure that it's filled with white also, and you can also make sure that the plot area is also done. Or you can also choose no fill uh, if that works for you as well. And then I'm going to remove the grid lines because I do not want the grid lines, no line. And now you start seeing that effect of the light blue representing the actuals. And I can actually go and choose the actual series and add the data label to make it very clear, right? And then these labels, I'm going to put them inside end or actually get it inside base. So, so basically, these are the actual values and the dark blue represents the budget. The dark green horizontal line uh, represents the forecasted value. And now for the final part, um, we can add labels to represent the forecast percentage or the uh, budget percentage. Before I do that, let me just move the legend to the top. And then I, we don't need to show, show this other background layer uh, in the legend. So I'm going to click on that and delete just that. I will keep the remaining as actual budget and forecast. And this one, product sales, actual versus budget versus forecast. And I will move it here. OK. And I can reduce the size of the font. There we go. OK. So now everything is OK. Now the label part for the percentage change. So here's what you can do. You can change, for example, percentage versus budget as a new column here. And I'm going to say this is going to be open parenthesis, actual minus budget, close parenthesis, divided by budget. So this tells me, I can change it to a percentage. So my actual value is 40% behind the budget. So I can do the same thing for forecast as well, uh, to say percentage versus forecast is the same concept. But once you calculate whatever you want to display as a label, my recommendation is do not try to display everything. It's just it's going to be very cluttered um, if you start doing that. So I would say whatever is the focus of the chart. If in case I want to show the percentage actual versus budget, I am going to use this. And I will go to the budget series. So in order to do so, you can always go in the drop down to say budget and plus data label. This adds a label. And it'll actually add the budget value, but we want to show the percentage change. So I'm going to click on the labels and I will go into the label options, uh, remove the value, uncheck, add value from cells, and then pick the new um, newly calculated values we have. Press OK. And this will add those labels. And you can make it a little bit less prominent. Uh, if that's going to be the focus, make that a little bit bigger and don't focus on the actual values. But the point is, um, make sure that depending on how many categories you have, the chart doesn't become too cluttered. If you only have two or three columns, then you can add more labels. It's not overpowering. But otherwise, just pay attention to how many labels, how many points are there on your visual on screen. Now, just to wrap it up, we have the light blue with actual, we have the blue budget, and we also display the percentage. So let's take um, product B. Product B, sales is actual 30, and then it is negative 6%, which means it's 6% behind the budget or less than the budget value. And same thing, if it is positive, it'll be plus. So for example, here, the product C, actual value is 45, which is 29% above the budget of budgeted value of 35. And so that's how this chart would be interpreted. You can add the x-axis and the y-axis titles if you would like. In my case, this is product and this is sales. So I don't, uh, it's not gonna add any extra value. And since I already have so much stuff in the chart, I'm gonna skip adding the titles, but I will uh, click on the chart outside here and then uh, go back to fill and line put a border around my chart and choose a color, border, 
there we go. So this is the effect we were going for, actual. And then there is um, the budget and the forecast, which are shown as horizontal lines and which will inform the user both budget and the forecast and choose the labels wisely uh, in order to make the chart easily readable for the user. If you have any questions about this or if you have suggestions to make this better, please let me know. I look forward to learning from you. Uh, and if you have any suggestions or the topics um, for the next videos, please let us know in the comments. I look forward to hearing from you and thank you so much for watching.